Welcome to Moonlight Recaps. We specialize in sci-fi movie recaps, film recaps, and do an in-depth analysis to give you story explanations, movie explanations, and full movie retellings. Today's movie recapped is Mission to Mars. Let's dive in. The year is 2020, and in Dickinson, Texas, a group of astronauts is celebrating their upcoming mission to Mars with their loved ones. Woody and his wife, Terry, both astronauts, are excited to be working together. Meanwhile, Phil, one of their colleagues, is more interested in charming any woman who pays him attention. Luke, another astronaut, tries to console his son, who is unhappy about his father's prolonged absence. Jim, the most accomplished pilot among them, arrives late to the party. He, Woody, and Luke discuss the mission. Fast forward 13 months, and the crew has successfully landed in Cydonia, Mars. Using a remote-controlled robot, they explore the planet, capturing images and gathering data. They soon spot a mysterious bright white formation 16 kilometers away. Reporting their findings to the International Space Station, they set out to investigate. Meanwhile, at the Mars Expedition Control Center, Jim and the rest of the crew watch the video feed from Mars. Back on Mars, the astronaut team approaches the strange phenomenon they've detected. Suddenly, they hear a mysterious low sound, initially dismissing it as interference from their rover. As they draw nearer to the mountain, they turn on their radar and discover metal beneath the entire formation. They decide to enhance the radar power for a clearer look, but the signal is abruptly interrupted, plunging them into silence and confusion. Without warning, a giant whirlwind emerges around the mountain. When the vortex finally subsides, the astronauts are stunned to see the mountain has transformed into a massive humanoid face. This shocking event triggers a powerful energy burst detected by the space station. Meanwhile, Woody, Terry, and Phil arrive at the station and are briefed on the incident. A faint distress signal from the Mars One mission camp reveals that some crew members may have survived. They receive a recording from Luke, who describes the disaster and mentions he's the sole survivor before the transmission cuts off. Determined to uncover the truth and rescue Luke, the crew launches a Mars 2 mission. Phil suggests reprogramming the Saturn research satellite, which is currently passing through Mars's orbit, to gather more information. Commander Ray points out that a new mission launch isn't feasible for another eight months. However, Jim proposes a daring plan. He has calculated that they can launch much sooner by reducing the ship's load and carrying more fuel. Ray is skeptical, but Jim, who developed the evacuation plan for the Mars mission, and Woody backs the idea, convincing Ray to authorize the mission. Afterward, Woody and Ray discuss the crew for the Mars 2 mission. The Mars 2 mission takes off smoothly as Jim promised. Weeks turn into months, and after 174 days in space, boredom sets in. Phil entertains himself by crafting a DNA model from candy, which Jim mischievously eats, making Phil joke that it now represents frog DNA. One day, Woody spots a dust storm heading straight for the Mars One expedition camp. He tells Jim they need to speed up or risk the storm covering the planet for an entire year. When data from the satellite arrives, they find the Mars One ship intact and see three graves, suggesting Luke might still be alive. Scanning the site reveals strange interference, which puzzles Woody and Jim, as it wasn't caused by the earlier earthquake. Ray grants them permission to land, and Jim takes a moment to watch old videos of his late wife, whose dream was to explore Mars and uncover its secrets. With only an hour before entering Mars orbit, the astronauts conduct final system checks. Suddenly, a micrometeoroid cloud strikes the ship, shattering glass and injuring Phil. They discover a hull breach, causing rapid decompression. Woody quickly fixes one hole, but the pressure keeps dropping, indicating more breaches. The crew ingeniously uses floating liquid to locate another hole, and Woody repairs it just in time, stabilizing the pressure. Woody wants to inspect the entire hull for more damage, but the ship is ready to enter orbit. As they start the engine, another breach in the fuel line causes a leak, and the fuel ignites, damaging the ship. The engine won't shut down, and the ship begins falling through the atmosphere, risking burning up in three minutes. In a panic, the crew realizes the Mars One supply module is only a kilometer away. They suit up for a spacewalk to reach it. Outside, they find the module moving too fast. Woody decides to use his rocket pack to reach the module and attach a tether. 
However, his fuel runs out quickly and he switches to autonomous flight mode, dropping propulsion. He approaches the module at great speed but can't stop and ends up hitting it. He secures the tether but is unable to grab on and flies past, continuing to fall toward Mars. The autonomous system shuts down, leaving him unable to change his flight course. The others want to fly after him, but Woody stops them, knowing the jetpacks don't have enough power to fly there and back. The rest of the crew gets a foothold on the module. Terry, desperate to save her husband, disconnects her tether and launches her harpoon. Woody reaches out, but the cable is half a meter short. Terry is about to fly closer and try again, but Woody knows she won't be able to return if she does. He tells her he loves her before taking off his helmet, instantly dying. Terry is on the edge of a breakdown, but Jim helps her calm down. Meanwhile, the space station stops receiving signals from Mars 2, and the staff thinks the crew hasn't survived. Suddenly, they receive data that the supply module in orbit has landed on Mars. Ray realizes that only Jim is capable of such a maneuver. Moments later, the remaining crew arrives on Mars. They retrieve the previous team's national flag and go looking for the first expedition ship, taking new motherboards to replace the burned ones. They find the ship and begin exploring it for clues. Jim goes into the greenhouse and notices that someone has been there all this time because the instruments are on and the plants are alive. Suddenly, he is attacked by Luke, who thinks Jim is a hallucination. Jim talks about his family and old memories, helping Luke snap out of it. Luke cries with happiness when he realizes his friends are there to rescue him, but becomes somber when they tell him about Woody. The team asks Luke what happened, but he only repeats that something burst from the top of the mountain and obliterated everyone. Luke believes he survived for a reason, as if he had been chosen to solve the mystery. He takes the crew to see the burial sites. Jim notices a huge storm in the distance about to cover the entire planet. Luke explains it has been there for a long time and originated from the mysterious mountain. The astronauts have no choice but to return to the ship. Luke tries to explain the mystery he must solve, saying the surface of the planet has changed over millions of years, hiding the clues. Luke turns on the computer and shows the mountain shaped like a face, playing the strange sounds they heard before. He believes these sounds are a repeating set of mathematical symbols correlated to a coordinate system, revealing a model of DNA. Luke thinks it's a portrait of the creature who created the face, missing the last pair of chromosomes. However, they still don't understand what this means. Later, Jim accidentally spills Phil's candy, which reminds him of the DNA model they played with. He realizes the sounds and DNA model derived from the face aren't a portrait but a test. The face is waiting for an answer. The first mission failed because they didn't add the missing chromosomes, so the face became defensive. Now it's up to them to find the right answer. Jim offers to find the tones corresponding to the missing chromosomes. Phil and Terry have doubts, but Jim changes their minds by pointing out that if they leave without solving it, their friends' deaths would be in vain. Luke suggests staying away from the face and sending the recording with a remote-controlled camera. The team travels to the mountain and plays the sound source near the face. Once the augmented DNA signal ends, an entrance appears in the face with a blinding white light. The astronauts assume it's an invitation, so Jim, Terry, and Luke go to the face while Phil stays on the ship with orders to leave at the appointed time even if they don't return. Inside the white-walled room, the entrance closes behind them, cutting off communication with Phil, trapping them. Jim removes his glove and confirms there is an Earth-like atmosphere, so the astronauts remove their helmets. An airlock opens behind them, leading to a dark room with a projection of the solar system. A hologram of a Martian appears, revealing the secret of the origin of life on Earth. In the distant past, Mars was like Earth, but a giant asteroid destroyed its ecosystem. The Martians went to another galaxy, but one ship was sent to Earth with their DNA which evolved into life on our planet. This means the Martians gave life to all mankind. After watching the story, Jim, Luke, Terry, and the Martian hologram hold hands around a projection of Earth, which disappears, replaced by a white circle. The Martian leaves and communication with Phil is restored. He reports the storm is intensifying and could soon overwhelm the ship. The team realizes a ship will fly out of the face and the countdown has begun, so they need to hurry. Terry and Luke rush to the exit,
but Jim refuses to leave. He believes the invitation is for him to explore space in the Martian ship, as his wife would have wanted. Luke and Terry respect his decision, saying a final goodbye before rushing outside. The storm is about to overtake their ship, blocking communications again. Phil feels frustrated, but waits as long as possible. Just as he prepares to take off, Luke and Terry cross the storm and arrive at the ship at the last second. The trio leaves safely together. Meanwhile, Jim steps into the white circle and finds himself in a transparent capsule that rises rapidly into the Martian spaceship. He panics when the capsule fills with water but realizes he can breathe. All the best moments of his life flash before his eyes, leaving him happy and ready for the new journey. The entire Martian face transforms into a pillar of fire and the ship carrying Jim rises, taking him into infinity and beyond. The rest of the crew watches from their ship, wishing Jim the best on his extraordinary journey. This is where the movie ends. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more amazing recaps.